All right, so here we are, Sunday evening, New Prospect Baptist Church here in Lewisburg. Glad that you're with us tonight for our Sunday night Bible study. As we're in the book of Philippians, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to the book of Philippians. Um, and so remember, Paul is writing this to the church. We're going to dive in on Sunday night. We've got lots of things going. And so uh, Paul is writing this book to the church of Philippi. We want to begin here in verse 12. Notice what he says. He says, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. The first thing I want you to notice if you're taking notes this evening is I want you to notice the dissatisfaction. This is fun and educational. Spelling the word dissatisfaction. Notice dissatisfaction. Look there in verse 12. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. Listen, too, too often we as believers will begin to pat ourselves on the back for all the things that we feel like we've accomplished to that point. But what we have to understand is we can never be satisfied with where we are in our relationship with Christ. We rest in Him. We find peace and joy in Him. And it's not us trying to figure it out ourselves, but we should want to wake up each day and say, you know what, I want to grow in my love for Christ more each and every day. I want to look more like Christ each and every day. And that is how we pursue after him. And that's how we seek after him. We can't become content. We can't say, you know what? I think I'm good where I am. Because at that moment, we'll begin to decline. Our love for him will begin to decline. Uh, our, our lives looking more like Christ will begin to decline. We have to have a little of, level of dissatisfaction, understanding we have not arrived. We will not arrive until we arrive on the other side. When we stand before him in his perfect righteousness, then we will have arrived. But until then, we, there's much work to do. We need to grow in our love for him more. We need to look more like him. So we need to have a level of dissatisfaction and say, yes, I'm not what I was, but I'm not what I should be. I'm not what I once was, but I'm not what I'm going to be. And we grow in a constant love for Christ. And how do we grow in our love for Christ? It's in his word. We grow in His Word. We, we study His Word. We, we have a greater understanding of who He is, what He's done, what He's doing, and what He will do. And that will drive us to become more like Him. The second thing I want you to notice that Paul tells us here is notice the devotion. Notice the devotion. Look there in verse 13 again. He began by saying, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining for what lies ahead. We have to understand is that what's his, what's his only goal here is to look toward Christ. That's his devotion, is to, is to strain for. He's, he's forgetting what's behind. Listen, what, what, what happened in the past, what was yesterday, it was yesterday. And God will use it for specific purpose, a specific design. God has reasons for all of it. And some of those things will go into tomorrow. But many of those things were laying the foundation. And so they're there. But if we just stare at the foundation that was laid yesterday without understanding that we need to be pressing on towards what is ahead of us, then we're going to struggle. And so there has to be a devotion to us. What is your devotion to? What, is, what do you give your life to? Is it to, to everything but Christ or is it to Christ? Is it seeking after him? Is it following after him? Is it chasing after him? Is it pushing towards him? Is it reaching out towards him? Is it straining for what is to come? To become closer to him? To look more like him? To love him more? We have to have a, a spirit of devotion with us where we look at Christ and we look to Christ and we seek after him and he is what our eyes are on. So we have to ask ourselves sometimes, what are your eyes on? What are you seeing? What's around you? What are you focusing on? And understand that that will tell you where your devotion lies. And it will tell you if you're looking in the past, looking at behind you, if you're stuck in regrets of what's happened, if you're in the, in the regrets of what maybe should have been, 
or just patting yourself on the back for maybe where you've been in Christ at some point in your life. But again, that's not the point. The point is we strive ahead. We push forward. We understand that's the third thing I want you to notice tonight is notice the direction. It gives us direction. Look there again in verse 13. What's he say? He says, straining forward to what lies ahead. Straining forward to what lies ahead. We need to understand that what is before us is always before us. And so people say, I just want to know what God wants me to do. I just need direction for my life. I need to know what he is trying to do. My thing is going a little nuts here. He wants us to know what we, we want to know. You know, God, what do you want? What's your will for my life? What's your design for my life? What's your desire for my life? And we say, God, I just want God's direction in my life. And all the while, we, we, we forget that, well, if you want direction in your life, you have to be moving in a direction, Right? Well, what's the direction that you should be moving towards? You're straining ahead for who? Christ. He's always before us, and we are going to him. It's almost like a child who, when they're beginning to learn to walk, what do we do? We sit before them, and, and we begin to draw them to us. And we'll catch them, and we'll, we'll pick them up when they fall. But, but, but what we'll really begin to do is when they we get pretty good at it, is we'll kind of hold our hands out, and as they get a little bit, uh, closer to us, what do we do? We kind of begin to back up and, and, and pull our hands away. Why? Because we know that they can go a little further. It's not to pull away from them. It's not to make it so they can't catch us or to hide from them. It's to show them, listen, I want you to come further. You can go further and I have more for you. And so our direction in our lives is directly correlated to the focus of our lives. And so if we are focused on Christ and we're looking towards him and we're straining in a race and driving ourselves towards him, then we are desiring to make it closer and closer to him. We want to be with him. We want to be near him. So if you want direction in your life, it's not just found like an Easter egg. It's not something we find under a rock somewhere. Christ is hiding in plain sight. It's him. And so we seek after him and he is the direction. We keep our eyes on him and we just keep straining and we just keep driving ourselves towards him, pushing ourselves towards him to get as close to him as we can. Not because we are enough of ourselves, because we just trust him, we know him, we love him, we want to be with him. He's the direction of our lives. The fourth thing I want you to see is the determination. Look at verse 14. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call in God of God in Christ Jesus. I think one of the reasons that we struggle for direction in our lives so often is we, we just don't know what we're striving for. Well, what, what's on? What's the goal? What's the prize? Is, is the upward call of God what, in, in Christ Jesus? What is to become like Christ? Is to be with God? It's to accomplish his work. It's to build his kingdom on this earth as it is in heaven. We literally get to be a part of the work of God. And that each day we should wake up with a determination say, I want to be with him. And I want to strive towards him. And I want to chase after him. And I want to be a part of whatever he's got going because I want to be a part of his work. And I want to build his kingdom. Why? Because my kingdom dissipates. His kingdom lasts. Look around us right now. And it's a matter of time, right? Our economy is just, right? The kingdom we built in many ways is struggling right now. Yet the kingdom of God is not struggling. It continues forward. It builds. And so ask yourself, what are the things you're like? What are you building in your life? What kingdom are you building? What are you striving towards? And is your mind set on things above or is it set on the things here? When you meet people in the circumstances of your life, is your mindset continually on just them and the circumstances, how they affect you? Or is it always the kingdom mind of understanding that whatever circumstances I have in my life and whatever relationship I find myself in with whatever person I come in contact with, that there's a purpose for building the kingdom of God with that person, some small, some big. The circumstances, some small, some big, but each aspect is building the kingdom of God Paul had a determination, and his determination was not to get caught up in the things of this earth, but instead to be a part of building the kingdom of God. What is the determination of your life? We're all trying to build something. It's just what we naturally do. We naturally create. We naturally build. And so are you uh, building a life 
that is just for this one earth here, this life here, to survive in the economies of this world? Or is it one that builds the kingdom of God, the kingdom that lasts? What is your determination? And you have to choose that. You have to choose. My determination is to seek after Him. My determination is Him and Him alone. My determination is to build the kingdom that stands rather than my kingdom and the kingdoms of this world that will fall and dissipate. That was Paul's determination. His direction was to seek after Christ. His determination was to build the kingdom of God. And the last thing was notice the discipline. Notice the discipline. Look at verse 15. Let those of us who are mature think this way. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. We need to be growing in, in a maturity in Christ. We need to be growing in maturity as followers of Christ. So maturity oftentimes is viewed as something that we get with age, but that's not the case, especially in the kingdom of God. Maturity is something that comes as our knowledge of who God is grows. The more we understand who He is, the more we grow in a knowledge, understanding of who He is, in our relationship with Him, in our role within His kingdom, when those things grow and that mindset matures, then we are those that are mature in Christ. And those that are mature in Christ can be a part and accomplish much in the kingdom of God for Christ. But it takes discipline. It takes discipline. Uh, when, 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 we're, when we're growing up in what we would call just maturity in just a normal human uh, biological sense, what do we do? We, we eat differently, right? Uh, we begin to speak differently. We begin to see things differently. We begin to talk differently. We begin to have relationships differently. Everything begins to change as we mature as human beings. Well, as we mature in Christ, everything should begin to change. And so my question to you is, are you different today in your relationship with the one true God than the first time you met him? Is your relationship with Christ different today than when you first met him? Is your relationship with other people different today than when you first met Christ? Is your relationship to the church different today than when you first met Christ? Is your, is, is your uh, mindset different in, in, as far as being a part of the kingdom of God today than when you first met Christ? All of these things should be different. All of these things should be growing. All of these things should look different, and we should fit within each one of them differently. My relationship with the one true God should be different today, much more stable, much more deep, much more strong than it was when I first met him. My relationship with Christ should be much different today, much more mature than it was when I first met him. My involvement in the kingdom of God should be much different today than when I first met him. My relationship with other people should be different today than when I first met him. And if it's not, one of two things has happened. Either I don't know Christ or I've never matured in Christ. And it's got nothing to do with age. And it's got nothing to do with how long ago you met him has everything to do with each day. Are you growing in a knowledge of Him? Do you grow in His Word? Do you grow in, in an understanding of who He is? Do you grow in a relationship? Do you trust Him more? Do you believe Him more? Do you follow Him more closely? Do you see the circumstances through the lens of who He is rather than just through your own selfish lens? And so as we wrap up tonight, my challenge to you is, listen, don't be satisfied with where you are just because it's where you are. Don't be satisfied with just a few good days. It doesn't mean you beat yourself up or you're just constantly bemoaning yourself for how you fall short. You rest in Christ. You find great joy in Christ. But you understand that what you are today is not what you are to be tomorrow. And the only way that you're not going to be what you are today tomorrow is that when you seek after him. It takes effort. and we, it, it takes. He says, you strain. I, I drive myself forward. Forgetting what's happened in the past. I seek after him, I go after him, I strain forward, I push forward because I know that he is the one that I desire. He is the one that I am devoted to. When we wake up each day to seek after him, we wake up each day looking toward him, we wake up each day with the heart and desire to grow more in him, then we will naturally become those that are mature. 
It'll be a daily thing, a discipline, where daily I took a step, I took two steps, I took 10 steps, I took half a step. Each day will be different. And there will be some where that day was a sprint and something unbelievable happened that pressed you forward in relationship with him. But many of the days will just be one step, one step. You know him better today than you did yesterday. And you see it in his word, and you see it in the circumstances around you, and you see it in the people around you. And you notice him, and you see him, and you recognize his faithfulness, you recognize his grace, you recognize his mercy, you recognize his love all around you, in people, in circumstances, and in his word. And you take part, of his, uh, take part in his work as part of his church, and you mature. And you look then, and you naturally, at that moment, you won't be satisfied with who you are today because you know that there's more waiting tomorrow. You will naturally become devoted to him because you see all that he is. It will naturally give direction to your life. It will naturally bring a determination to your life to be a part of the kingdom of God rather than the kingdom of this earth. It's a discipline. So my challenge for you, my challenge for myself is each day, wake up. Find him in his word, find him in his circumstances, find him in the people around you, part of his church. And you'll naturally become more mature in him as you seek after him and build the kingdom that lasts. We're going to pray tonight and then uh, we'll be dismissed from this video. It's time to pray for you. God, again, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. And we thank you that we can gather uh, in spirit even when we can't gather physically. And so, God, I pray that uh, your word is spoken clearly here, that anything that's not of you will be forgotten uh, out one ear, in one ear, out the other. Anything that is of you will stay in all of our hearts and leave us changed from where we are today. Help us to be those that are disciplined in our pursuit of you, where we push forward each day to seek after you. We thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for the unbelievable God that you are. And we thank you that you've saved us. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for Jesus. And in his name we pray. Again, thank you for being here tonight. Tune back in Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We'll be here. And I know it's a little wonky. It's a little different. It's something we're not used to. But, hey, we still get to gather together in spirit. And this is better than not being If we can't gather in person, then we still get to gather here. So uh, check on each other. Reach out to each other. Make sure you care for those. Pray for those that are fighting this illness, that have gotten it. Pray for those on the front lines of caring for those that don't have it. And, uh, and I can't wait for things to get back to normal. But we're going to take the precautions because, as Paul said, the best thing for us, the choice we should make, what, is to remain. Yes, it is, it is wonderful for us to, to, to be able to think of uh, being on the other side with the Lord. But it's better for us to remain Why? for the sake of others that we can be Christ to them. So be Christ to somebody tonight. Be Christ to somebody each day this week. And show the great love of him to them. Thank you for being here. We'll see you Wednesday night.